finding the tomb of Alexander is the dream of every archaeologist. It's the holy grail. From hearing the voice of Alexander the Great to using some of the most high-tech equipment this world has ever seen, this is the story of how a researcher finally found the tomb of Alexander the Great. Before his death, Alexander had made a special request to be called the son of Zeus Ammon and didn't want to be buried alongside his father Philip in Egei. Historical accounts from the early days tell us that when Alexander passed away suddenly in Babylon in 323 BC, his body was mummified, similar to the pharaohs, and placed in a gold coffin, with the intention of transporting it to Siwa. However, his request wasn't respected. The funeral procession carrying Alexander's body was intercepted in Syria by one of his generals, Ptolemy I Soter. Around late 322 or early 321 BC, Ptolemy diverted the body's journey to Egypt, where it found its resting place in Memphis, a city that had served as the heart of Alexander's administration in Egypt. While Ptolemy had possession of Alexander's body, the conqueror's personal items, including his armor, diadem, and royal scepter, were held by his other generals, Perdiccas and Eumenes. In the late 4th or early 3rd century BC, Ptolemy Philadelphus arranged for Alexander's body to be transferred from the Memphis tomb to Alexandria for a second burial. His successor, Ptolemy Philopater, later placed Alexander's remains in Alexandria's communal mausoleum. According to Strabo, this mausoleum was named the Soma, which translates to body in Greek. By the year 274 BC, Alexander's final resting place was known to be in Alexandria, and his tomb became the center of the Ptolemaic cult dedicated to Alexander the Great. A recent discovery provides further evidence supporting the belief that Alexander the Great is indeed buried in Alexandria. The archaeologists found a significant artifact on the final day of their excavations, which turned out to be an early Hellenistic statue bearing resemblance to Alexander the Great. This discovery greatly motivated the persistent archaeologists to continue their excavations. Excitedly, Papa Costa, one of the researchers, said, the statue revealed itself to me, offering his hand. I prayed to God to see the way the hand turned, to know if it carries a spear, to prove that it belongs to Alexandros the Great, the spear-bearer, which was created using the same technique as Lysippus, with a tilted head to the side and downward. According to sources like Plutarch, it's written that Alexandros had a peculiar way of addressing Zeus. He would gaze downward at an angle and say, I belong to the earth, you take care of Olympus as mentioned by the researcher. Papa Costa further remarked, it's a remarkable stroke of luck that this statue, a sought-after relic for many archaeologists over the years, was discovered by a Greek expedition. The magnificent Greek marble statue, universally recognized as a portrayal of Alexander the Great himself, is currently on display at the National Museum of Alexandria. Calliope Limnaos Papa Costa has a history of notable discoveries in Alexandria. In 2015, her team, the Hellenic Institute for the Research of Alexandrian Civilization, led by Papa Costa, revealed a substantial public structure dating back to the Ptolemaic era. The finding included a carved tunnel buried at a depth of 10 meters, 30 feet. Papa Costa explained the significance of this discovery, stating, This is a notable find because the site belongs to the royal quarters of the Ptolemy, and we have historical records about these structures from ancient times. Two years later, a more substantial revelation provided support for the belief that Alexander the Great's tomb is very nearby. In a moment that shocked the world, the archaeologist uncovered the ancient Alexandrian royal quarters near the junctions of the ancient city, aligning with her initial expectations. Funding for Papa Costa's archaeological work primarily comes from private institutions and sponsors, with notable contributions from the Greek company Cleos Saw, the Egyptian Reliance Group of Companies, and the Moheb Kasabgui Foundation. The National Geographic Society is also lending support to the excavation efforts by providing electrical resistivity tomography ERT technology, aiding Papa Costa in identifying potential areas that could lead to the discovery of Alexander's tomb. Another theory that has gained popularity revolves around the Casta tomb in Amphipolis. This theory draws its foundation from the unearthing and exploration of an enormous ancient burial mound dating back to the late 4th century BCE coinciding with Alexander's passing. The Casta tomb is one of the most lavishly decorated tombs ever discovered in Greece and showcases numerous artistic and architectural elements indicating that important people were buried in it. 
The Casta tomb was initially excavated in 2012 by a team of Greek archaeologists under the leadership of Katerina Peristeri. The tomb is enclosed by a circular wall measuring 500 meters or 1,600 feet in circumference and comprises four chambers, which are accessed through a grand entrance guarded by two sphinxes. Inside this tomb, archaeologists found two splendid caryatids, sculpted female figures with one arm outstretched in a gesture to deter intruders. Additionally, they uncovered a mosaic floor portraying the kidnapping of Persephone by Hades, the god of the underworld, and a marble door leading to the innermost chamber. The tomb is decorated with various symbols and motifs associated with Alexander and his dynasty, including rosettes, suns, stars, shields, and Macedonian crests. The most captivating aspect of the tomb is the innermost chamber, where archaeologists came upon the skeletal remains of five individuals. Among them, there was a woman over the age of 60, two men aged between 35 and 45, a newborn infant, and a fifth person whose bones had been cremated. The archaeological team also discovered pieces of a wooden coffin, as well as glass and gold ornaments, pottery vessels, coins, weapons, and armor. The identities of these individuals remain a mystery, yet experts have put forward various ideas on the basis of historical sources and archaeological findings. Some experts believe that Alexander might have been buried in the royal tombs located in Macedonia. Their theory hinges on the discovery and identification of a cluster of tombs dating to the late 4th century BCE, matching with the time of Alexander's demise. Inside this tomb, one discovers two chambers. One chamber contains a stone sarcophagus housing a gold larynx or chest containing the cremated remains of a man, while the other chamber holds another gold larynx containing the cremated remains of a woman. The walls of the tomb are decorated with an awful lot of paintings, sculptures, and symbols closely associated with Alexander and his accomplishments. For instance, there is a depiction of a lion hunt, a favored pastime of both Alexander and his father, Philip. Throughout the tomb, one can observe rosettes, stars, and suns, symbols denoting royalty and divinity. Shields and helmets, representative of martial prowess, are also present along with Macedonian crests, signifying the dynasty's identity. The widely held belief is that the man buried in tomb two is none other than Philip II, Alexander's father, who played a key role in unifying Macedonia and paving the way for Alexander's conquests. Yet, the enigma persists. If tomb two is indeed the final resting place of Philip II and Cleopatra Eurydice, where then could Alexander's remains lie? Some scholars have suggested the possibility of his burial in tomb worst, a simpler cyst grave that has fallen victim to ancient looting. However, this tomb harbors a remarkable wall painting portraying the abduction of Persephone by Hades, suggesting that it may have been constructed for an individual revered as a deity or hero after its death. Plus, this tomb displays signs of a shrine or altar nearby, implying its role as a place of reverence and pilgrimage. This belief is rooted in several factors, including the tomb's location and orientation, which align with descriptions provided by ancient visitors to Alexander's tomb in Alexandria. The depiction of Persephone in the painting is linked to Alexander's journey into Egypt and his visit to the Siwa Oasis, where he received the title of Son of Zeus Ammon. The painting also carries significance in relation to Alexander's passing and subsequent deification, which basically means that Alexander was turned into a god by the people. It was believed that he joined his father Zeus in Olympus after his death. The shrine or altar might have been established by Alexander's successors or admirers, serving as a tribute to honor his memory or seek his benevolence. The name Alexander the Great echoes throughout history, symbolizing unparalleled military prowess and conquest. Born in 356 BC in the ancient city of Pella, Alexander emerged as one of the world's most remarkable military leaders. From his early days to his legendary campaigns, his tale continues to fascinate and inspire. Alexander's upbringing was anything but ordinary, being the son of King Philip II of Macedon and Queen Olympias. His education was entrusted to the renowned philosopher Aristotle. Under Aristotle's mentorship, Alexander developed a sharp intellect, a thirst for knowledge, and a deep appreciation for literature and philosophy that shaped his worldview and military tactics. In 336 BC, 
tragedy struck the royal family when King Philip II was assassinated. At the tender age of 20, Alexander ascended to the throne, inheriting a kingdom ready to become a major power in the ancient world. He quickly suppressed internal uprisings and solidified his rule, showcasing leadership qualities that defied his youthful age. Alexander's thirst for expansion quickly directed his attention eastward, toward the sizable Persian Empire governed by King Darius III. In 334 BC, he began his foray into Asia Minor, thereby taking the first steps toward his fabled Persian campaigns. The Battle of Granicus River, where Alexander led from the front, set the stage for his military leadership. Despite his significantly outnumbered forces, Alexander's brilliant tactics and bravery secured victory. The ensuing battles were nothing short of astonishing, in 333 BC, at Issus, Alexander defeated Darius III in a fierce clash that compelled the Persian king to flee the battlefield, leaving behind his family and riches. This triumph solidified Alexander's image as an unstoppable force. Yet, it was the pivotal Battle of Gagamela in 331 BC that would carve his name permanently in history. Faced with a vast Persian army, Alexander employed a masterful strategy that exploited Darius's weaknesses, and he displayed audacity and brilliance. The result was a resounding victory, leading to the collapse of the Persian Empire. With Persia under his control, Alexander's aspirations expanded. He continued his eastward march, conquering one territory after another. His army, known as the Macedonian Phalanx, was a disciplined and remarkably effective fighting force, complemented by elite cavalry units, including the renowned companion cavalry under his loyal general Hephaestion, Alexander advanced into India in 327 BC, where King Porus put up a formidable resistance. The Battle of the Hydaspes River proved to be one of his most challenging encounters. Nonetheless, Alexander's strategic brilliance once again prevailed. He secured victory and, impressed by Porus's bravery, eventually forged an alliance with him. By 324 BC, Alexander's empire stretched from Greece to Egypt, and extended as far east as India. His conquests were unparalleled in history, and his ambitions appeared limitless. However, his troops were fatigued, and the trials of their journey had taken a toll on their spirits. Alexander's health started to decline, but he remained resolute in his pursuit. In the spring of 323 BC, while residing in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar II in Babylon, Alexander fell gravely ill. His condition swiftly deteriorated, making it clear that he was approaching the end of his remarkable life. As word of his illness spread, his devoted soldiers, who had accompanied him on numerous campaigns, gathered anxiously outside the palace, hoping for their leader's recovery. In his final moments, Alexander is said to have called upon his generals and closest confidants. With great exertion, he softly conveyed his last wishes, requesting them to meet me in the afterlife as good and valiant men. His generals were overcome with grief, fully aware that the world was on the verge of losing a conqueror of unparalleled magnitude. On either June 10th or 11th, in the year 323 BC, at the tender age of 32, Alexander the Great drew his last breath. 